ओके अस्सलाम वालेकुम गुड इवनिंग टुडे स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस सी शिप बिलिंग सेशन नंबर 19 एंड डिस्कशन टॉपिक फॉर सीनियर ग्रुप ऑफ ग्रेड 8 एंड अबव यू नो दैट देयर इज टू सेशन वन इज सीनियर ग्रुप ऑफ ग्रेड 8 एंड अबव एंड अदर इज ग्रेड 7 एंड बिलो दिस इज वी कॉल जूनियर ग्रुप एंड इट विल बी हेल्ड ऑन संडे फॉर द सेम टॉपिक टुडे टॉपिक इज दैट स्कोप्स ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इट विल बी फॉर टू मिनट्स एंड सेकंड टॉपिक describe the potential opportunities and threats as a result of ai domination so today rules i want to tell that uh, we parents and uh, organizer will not will not interfere today motor moderator will be rahan ahmed grade 12 alin junior school alin uae this next one hour will be entirely under rahan ahmed and his team will not interfere if you have any issue we can just go to the chat and after the discussion session, uh, question and answer session will be for 15 minutes. And during the 15 minutes, our honorable panel of judges will select two best speakers. Honorable uh, panel of judges, I can say that uh, Engineer Khajamad Bhai, Engineer Bhagno Dibishash, and uh, I believe more uh, to join. And uh, they will select the best two speakers. And today, honorable guest, engineer Muhammad Hassan Ali, assistant manager, Duba at Dewa, UE, and honorable advisor of Bangladesh Engineers and Architect, B World. So now I'll hand over to Raihan Ahmed. Raihan Ahmed, you can start. And good luck. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, my name is Raihan Ahmed. I'm currently in grade 12, studying in LA Junior School uh, in the UAE. Now, uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first topic will be about the scopes of artificial intelligence in which we have two minutes to speak per speaker. So anyone who wants to speak on the topic, would you please raise your hands? Um, all right. So first we'll start with Sinan Fatan. Would you please introduce yourself and speak on the topic? You have two minutes exactly. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. My name is Sinan. I I study in grade 10 in the International School of Shaykhat Al Ain and I live in Al Ain. All right. I'll start with the first topic, which is the scopes of AI. I think they're talking about the different types of AI actually. So I'll start. Now, I'll start off with general AI. Uh, nowadays, a lot of people use ChatGPT. And this chat GPT is an example of general AI, which basically possesses the ability to understand, learn, and apply knowledge across different domains, much like a human. And one thing that's special, uh, one thing that's also common between AI is that they're automated with program. Basically, like automated vehicles, like, if you have played Call of Duty, you, you would have heard of a UAV, which is an unmanned aerial vehicle. And it's basically vehicles that don't need, uh, don't need to be controlled by human. There are also other types of AI, uh, mainly uh, like financial and the other stuff, industrial, uh, health, etc. Normally, these uh, industrial AI can talk about, and I mean, uh, they work on factories and they basically reduce the risk of other human employees of working in dangerous, a dangerous environment. You have 20 seconds remaining. But there is. Uh, AI can be used in AI can also be used in education. They can uh, they can replace teachers, etc. And they even uh, your uh, time is up. Uh, Thank you for speaking. All right, on to our next speaker uh, will be Ragi. Please introduce yourself and speak on the topic. And uh mr rug okay yeah hello time starts now assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my name is ragib i am in grade 12 studying in the international school of shwefat uh, i can't really turn on the camera for this meeting so i'm sorry about that i'll write 
I'll just begin then. So the scope of artificial intelligence is quite wide and it's continually evolving as technology advances. Basically, AI aims to develop computer systems which are capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. And a breakdown of some of the key scopes uh, within artificial intelligence. Uh, one of them is natural language processing. This includes tasks like language translation, sentiment and uh, analysis, and text summarization. Another one is computer vision. Computer vision aims to give machines the ability to interpret and understand visual information from the real world, similar to how humans do. And lastly is cognitive computing. It involves the use of AI algorithms to understand reason and learn from large volumes of complicated data. And these scopes are just some of the scopes that represent just a fraction of the diverse applications of AI. And as technology continues to advance, the scope of AI is likely to expand even further as well. That's it. Thank you. All right. Uh... All right, for okay, our next speaker will be Tahmid Ahmed. Would you please unmute your mic and introduce yourself and begin speaking on the topic? Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Tahmid Ahmed and I study in grade nine at Islamia English School in Abu Dhabi and I am from Bangladesh. I'll be starting off my speech with the first topic, which is the scopes of artificial intelligence or also widely known as AI. Artificial intelligence is a, a set of computer methods that try and copy how humans think and solve problems. For example, uh, solving puzzles or making choices, learning from uh, information around us, understanding the human language, finding patterns. AI systems uh, look a a look at, can look at a lot of data and it can find trends and helpful insights. And it can also do repetitive tasks uh, by themselves and they can predict things. And one big advantage of AI is that it can learn from its own mistakes. Artificial intelligence, uh, the scopes are that it changes a lot of industries and it makes tasks a lot easier and better in different parts of the world. Uh, for example, we use AI in our day-to-day -day activities. For example, virtual assistants like Google Assistant uh, or Amazon Alexa or even ChatGPT. Uh, they try to understand what people say and do things like answering questions or controlling smart home gadgets. And in hospitals, the AI is used to automate messaging systems like they use uh, they uh, introduce WhatsApp to help people book appointments with doctors and you banks use phone seconds. systems that talk to customers. Okay. Banks use phone systems that uh, talk to customers and guide them to the services and phone companies use similar systems for uh, things like helping with data plans or fixing technical problems. AI okay. is a Your big topic is and uh, it I'll is... I have to ask you to quickly wrap it up. Okay. Uh, yes, it's so it keeps getting better and new ideas keep coming up. So thank you. All, all right. So for our next speaker, uh, I'm asking Abdullah Tassin to open his mic and uh, speak on the topic. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. My name is Abdullah Tahseen. I live in Sharjah and currently I am in Dimot Fort University studying Bachelor's of Mechanical Engineering uh, first year. And so the first topic is the scope of AI. Now, one of the most striking aspects of AI is how it basically integrates into your everyday lifestyle. You might not even realize that you're using AI. For example, you have your virtual assistants like Siri, you have Alexa. They can also recommend algorithms on streaming platforms. AI basically in, uh, enhances your everyday experiences. It has transformed healthcare, finance, transportation industries, and they also make them 
more efficient and accessible. For example, in healthcare, AI-powered tools can analyze medical images and help the doctors to understand the human anatomy better. For example, financial institutions, they use AI to detect uh, cal uh, the calculation of their transactions. You have self-driving cars which are guided by AI, and they also promise safer and more efficient transportation systems. Now, the scope of AI for the time being is limited to domestic and commercial purposes as, for example, medi uh, medical and aviation sectors, they're also using AI to improve their services. Now, if AI is outperforming the human efforts, then I think, in my personal opinion, opting for AI will be better because it will, be, uh, it will reduce the further costs in the long run for the future. Thank you. All right, thank you for the speech. Now, would Abdul Tafim like to speak about the topic? All right, uh, first of all, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I'm Abdul Tafim, uh, studying in Progressive English School, Sharjah, grade 12 now. So, last year, definitely. All right, so first of all, scopes of artificial intelligence. If you want to underst understand the scope of something, you have to know what is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is generally the intelligence that is possessed by the computers, possessed by ro robots, something that we create artificially. So, that is artificial intelligence. Sometimes we may think that uh, the greatest inventions of the human beings might be the big rockets, maybe uh, sometimes it may be nuclear power, but maybe the greatest inventions of human beings are something, something as little as this that we carry in our hand every day connecting everywhere possible and then calling uh, even this meeting uh, in earlier times people they used to meet uh, from all over the world they used to come at a current point now with a touch of a button we can meet anywhere and everywhere so this is just what we are doing is an ex a perfect example of the scope and the lens that ai can go in order to help us and aid us so uh, i'll give you some examples because the time is short and you can't really uh, like fully say the good things about AI. So, first of all, healthcare, which is very common, healthcare x rays, then BMIs, everything, weight machines, everything is done by artificial intelligence. Now, they won't replace doctors, that's for sure. You need to trust a human being, but then what they can do is really assist the doctors. They can help improve the amount of healthcare and the knowledge, and then the studies, and then all the machines, the answer questions, round the clock patient support, and then all the things that a nurse can do. Generally, an AI can take the quiz from you and they can help you diagnose a disease. Uh, diag so, diag uh, like diagnosing a disease can be easily possible. The jobs of nurses can be easily done by the AI. Then uh, we could we could say about finance, credit cards, debit cards, and then education. That means the Zoom and then the Google Meet. And then we know about the transportation, the self-driven cars and everything. But then the most important uh, scope of AI that I'd like to say is agriculture. Agriculture uh, has supported human beings since since I'll the earlier of times. Let me wrap it up. All right, so uh, so smart seeds and then everything breeding the plants so that they would survive in conditions like UAE is also one of the greatest feats of human technology and artificial intelligence. So that's why I'd like to wrap it up that it is evolving, yes, and it's getting better and better. Thank you. All right, thank you for that. That was very well said. Now for the next uh, speaker with Syed Sadiqul Islam, like to speak? Or... Yeah. Okay. AI, the scope of AI is a vast encompassing everything from job automation to personalized learning to cybersecurity. The future of AI scope is healthcare, technology, finance services, nationality, security, gaming, relay retail etc ai is in the future ai is expected to improve industries like healthcare manufacturing and customer service leading to a higher quality experience uh, experience for both workers and customers. Artificial intelligence 
is undoubtedly an outstanding career with a vast scope. That's it. All right, right. thank you for speaking. Yeah. Now, Saidi, you are from which grade? Grade four. Uh, okay, well, it's fine, uh, but okay, well, I'll call out some names since no one's raising their hand. Would Najib Mahfouj like to speak uh, if they are in the meeting? I, yeah, I see them. Would you please open your mic and speak about the topic? I'm outside right now, so I didn't prepare anything. I'll just listen to the meeting. Well, you can try to just uh, share what you know about AI and just speak whatever knowledge you have, just try to share it. It's fine. You don't have to prepare anything beforehand. Okay, okay. So to me, AI is basically replacing humans with a artificial robot, which replaces our normal intelligence. And I feel like the, that, the, that AI can eventually replace humans, but might not happen very soon. So I think that the only job which AI maybe cannot replace is doctor because I doubt any humans will uh, like trust a robot to even like take care of their uh, medical things because like they, they want a human being to, uh, to be trusted and so that they cannot make any mistakes and everything goes smoothly. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Raihan, you're muted. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, well, Mr. Abra, I believe I don't see them in the meetings. So I'm assuming they're not participating today. So we'll we'll move on to the next topic. Uh, topic number two, which is to describe the potential opportunities and threats as a result of AI domination. And for this, the speakers will be given three minutes each. If you want to speak on the topic, please raise your hand and I will select you in order. Um, all right. Okay. Mr. Sinan Fatan, would you please like to speak on the topic? Yeah. The, the opportunities of what AI can do is, uh, is very it's very uh, 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 uh it, it's a lot of opportunities include a if if you apply if you make them work to uh work in health faculties or engineering faculties whatever they can basically replace humans and they can they can uh work more efficiently and more consistently and make less mistakes than what a human can make. And they can do that much faster, making the society or the cities grow even faster. They can, uh, and nowadays these, uh, these websites and banks, they sometimes they have some safety issues, whatever. These AI can increase these safety and securities. Uh, and basically improve the cybersecurity of um, basically almost everything nowadays and prevent hackers from doing uh, from doing things and collecting data but there are also many threats uh one thing mainly job displacement if ai can if ai eventually dominates they will of course uh, make people lose jobs and uh, since AI can basically collect as much data as they can, uh, people will lose their privacy eventually, and people will not really feel safe. And sometimes the over-dependence of AI can lead to vulnerabilities in many different things. Like if, if you, if you uh, over rely on AI to protect your website, let, uh, for example, 
if if that AI malfunctions, then your basically your whole website will be unsafe for users to use, and nobody will you. And when disaster stops on your website, nobody will use your website. And you uh, have thirty seconds remaining. All right. AI can also uh, be used in uh, be used in social media, as they have basically they basically have access to the internet and they can cause while they can defend they can cause destruction and they can also spread misinformation. Uh, that's, that's it. All right. Thank you for that. Now, would Mr. Abdullah Tafim like to speak? I by mistakenly rose my hand, but it's fine. I'll say. All right. So, first of all, opportunities and threats that an AI can pose. So, first of all, I'd like to throw some facts. So. 11 to 37 percent estimated increase of labor productivity related to AI by 2035. That's Parliament's think tank 2020 report. And then 1.5 to 4 percent estimate of how much AI could help global greenhouse emissions by 2030. That's in the same report. So there are there are some opportunities that AI is doing and some good things that AI is doing. So for, I'll, I would like to go through some. So strengthening democracy. So first of all, democracy, for, we all knew that open, uh, the secret ballot system. So uh, people would provide their vote in just a chit, like in the earlier days. But nowadays you can just click a button and then they could take the average, the, all the calculations, uh, make sure there are no mistakes, everything that all the AI can do. So it definitely strengthens the democracy and then AI security and safety. So first of all, uh, in the earlier times of AI, actually, we used to have different passwords for maybe Facebook, for YouTube, or maybe the computer itself. And if you forgot something, then you wouldn't know. But now, since everything is digitalized, uh, just by your fingerprint you can get your passwords and you can also something maybe you may write something and you may not be able to arrange it as efficiently as in a computer if you write a note then everything that you do will be uh, they may be tagged by the color or maybe they will be grouped by ai for you so everything that ai is doing is like uh, it's just easing our lives that's what we might think at least and cyber security maybe uh, for example it has helped the police catch some of the through some of the law violators that uh, some of the people do, they can track their location, their fingerprint, their biometrics and everything. So AI is definitely helping in keeping the country safe. That's for sure. And then in military matters, we can understand the defense and attack strategies, hacking, and then also target key systems. And maybe cyber warfare, maybe how was Russia attacking Ukraine? My friend was stuck in the Ukrainian university there and there were drone attacks in his campus. So yes, if you want to use AI to your aid, to efficiently kill somebody, I guess, or maybe win a war, you can just use drones or maybe some rockets or some some things. But uh, that means since everything, is, since everything is easy, it may be in the wrong hands. The bad effects, 14% of the jobs that have been gone. And if weapons are automized, that means that AI can think for themselves and they can turn against us and then self-aware AI and then loss of human influence. If the doctors are replaced by AI, then you don't have any empathy, any emotions, any reasoning. So and self-aware AI means everything you teach an AI, it adapts to it. It learns. Since it learns, it can understand by itself and it may not I need orders ask, from ask you. you to wrap it up. All right. So so that's why I would like to say that we give AI control, but not too much control because everything has a good effect and bad effect. So we must. So this is a powerful tool. We need to implement the good effects and get rid of the bad effects. Thank you. All right. Now, could Mr. Abdullah Tassin uh, speak about the topic? All right. The second topic is the opportunities and threats posed by AI. Now, in this modern world, I consider AI to be a necessary evil because it has significant amount of advantages. It also has significant amount of disadvantages. Now, I'm going to list a few. Now, advantages being enhanced automation. AI-enabled machines can learn 
and adapt to new tasks, making them more efficient and productive than your traditional machines. For instance, uh, robots with AI capabilities can perform complex manufacturing logistics. Uh, they can also do quality control tasks. Basically, it improves the quality of products and services. Second, you have improved healthcare. AI has the potential to revolutionize the healthcare industry by improving patients' outcomes and also reducing costs. AI-powered machines can analyze the medical images and patients' data to detect diseases early and accurately. This is especially important for can, uh, cancer patients because in my personal life, I have seen many cancer patients die because their cancer was detected early at stage three or stage four, which is very sad. And also you have smarter form of transportation. AI can transform the transportation industry by making uh, vehicles safer, more efficient, and can also make them more environmental friendly. Self-driving cars uh, powered by AI technology can also reduce the number of accidents caused by human error, and they can also improve the uh, traffic flow, I guess. And disadvantages, uh, since there is not a lot of time, I'm gonna mention two main disadvantages. First is ethical concerns. Now, what you have to realize is if something is becoming more common in today's world, there will be two sides of the party. You will have the good guys and you will have the bad guys. The good guys will use the thing for the good use and the bad guys will use the uh, thing for the bad use. So ethical concerns, they include that uh, people, they are using AI for unethical uh, purposes. For example, uh, hackers, they can mimic victims' voices and spread misinformation on their behalf. And the second and the biggest uh, issue that people are scared of is the job displacement. Because since AI is becoming more prominent in everyday use, uh, AI is replacing the jobs of the people that used to be very common. This is especially prevalent to the persons who are studying in the computer sector. Persons, for example, software engineers, uh, game developer, etc. They have a high risk of losing their job because it's their only means of livelihood. And if that gets if that gets snatched away by a simple thing called AI, then that's very devastating. So thank you. That's it. All right. Uh, well said. Uh, okay. Now, would Mr. Tahmid Ahmed uh, like to speak? Um, yes. And as I had been talking about the scopes of AI earlier, I'll continue with some more advantages and I'll mention some threats as well. AI technology offers uh, a lot of chances for industries to do better and uh, come up with new ideas like uh, making things like robots which are powered by AI and can do uh, monotonous jobs on assembly lines and it makes things easier and faster for them and this also helps companies to make more and more money. Also AI helps make smart new things for example as mentioned before it uh, helps making self-driving cars which uh, changes the way we travel and it gives new jobs to engineers and tech people. Plus, AI helps doctors to take a better care of the patients because by uh, AI can look at people and can it, it can by itself spot the problems earlier and it can tailor uh, treatments that fit each person the best. AI also helps keep the, our information safe, like for example, it can stop hackers from finding our information and stop cyber attacks immediately and it keeps important information safe. And in stores and schools, AI looks at what people like to give stuff that they'll enjoy and find useful. However, AI is not always a good thing because uh, sometimes uh, people's jobs might go away because machines can do them instead. A good example for this is the checkout counter counters at shopping malls because machines can replace them which means fewer jobs for the cashiers and also there are 
uh, worries about privacy and fairness, like using AI to recognize faces might sometimes uh, hamper people's privacy and treat some groups unfairly. Uh, additionally, not everyone might get the good stuff of AI. People who can't use tech well might get left behind as well. And this makes inequality worse and relying too much on AI, as mentioned before, for important things like driving cars might not be safe either. There are many ways to deal with these worries though, like uh, helping people learn new skills so that uh, they can do different jobs on their own and uh, if their jobs go away and making new rules and checks to make sure that AI is used fairly and safely. So we should all make sure everyone can use AI and uh, everyone has a fair chance of it. In uh, To conclude, I'd like to say that AI has a lot of good advantages and it is certainly a futuristic option for us. However, we also need to control it so that we use it the right way and it helps everyone, but it does not cause problems. Thank you. All right, now would Mr. Raghib like to speak on the topic? Yes, okay, so I'll just start right away. Uh, there are plenty of opportunities and threats which are associated with AI domination, as the topic says which can have an effect on society, economy, and humanity as a whole as well. Some of the common opportunities that are associated with AI is improved healthcare, since AI can assist with healthcare, uh, healthcare professionals in diagnosing diseases, predicting patient outcomes, and personalizing treatment plans based on individual genetics and medical histories. It can also create safer work environments because autonomous systems and robots can perform dangerous tasks in environments such as mining and construction, uh, which are associated with a lot of high rates of death from working. And this reduces the risk of injury or such deaths to human workers. Uh, on the other hand, there are also some threats associated with AI and the most common of them, they include privacy concerns. Uh, the widespread use of these AI powered technologies, such as surveillance systems, uh, raises concerns about privacy infringement. There's a risk of personal data being misused or exploited for profit or surveillance purposes, which is very controversial in this regard. And one more is ex uh, existential risks. Some experts warn of the potential long-term risks associated with AI dominance, including the existent, uh, existential risk of super intelligent AI surpassing human intelligence and posing an existential threat to humanity. Uh, these are just some of the threats and opportunities that AI possesses and addressing these requires us to carefully analyze the capabilities of AI and make sure it's under our control at all times so that it doesn't go out of hand for me. So that's all. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, would Mr. Okay. So I'll just call out some names. Uh, would Mr. Najib Mahfouz like to uh, talk on, speak on the topic? Mr. Najib, are you, uh, are you with us? Um, all right. Okay. In that case, uh, I I will be asking uh, Mr. Said Sadekul, the speaker, just to speak on the topic. Uh, I understand you're not part of the group, but I'd still like to hear your opinion and thoughts. Uh, if you would speak, Mr. Said. Okay, uh, I don't think they'll be speaking either. So, okay, that for, that is the end of the second topic. Uh, that is the end of the second topic. Now we will move on to the question and answer section of the discussion. Uh, in this, uh, we'll have a few, uh, 15 minutes to ask questions and uh, to anyone and to get the answers we, uh, we have. So, uh, would anyone like to ask a question? Uh, please raise your hands. 
Um, okay, so I don't think anyone right now has a question, but I do actually have a question. Now, in, throughout the meeting, the mention of AI being useful and uh, you know being useful and you know beneficial for humanity has been prevalent, along with the fact that AI could potentially be a threat if mishandled. How do we prevent this from happening? How do we prevent AI from you being used for malicious purposes uh, and uh, you know basically stop that threat? Uh, this is a question open to anyone. Uh, yes, Mr. Abdullah Tafim, would you please like to answer? Uh, all right. Uh, so thing is, how do we handle the AI properly? So we the the we have to understand the power levels of each so if it is too powerful maybe only for if it's not for general civil, civil use then we do not let them handle it and then wherever there's a virus there's an anti if there's a problem there's a solution whether it the old whether it be the old way or the modern way so uh, some things that are so inclusivity is the uh, keyword here so if you would not like some of the things to be handled by the general public then don't give the knowledge to them because whatever is turned to the masses is easily ruined i guess and then uh, other things are uh, for example security and uh, bully, cyber bullying so we, uh, there are options to report as well and why would put their personal details which they could be bullied for on media in the first place so it's how you use it think of it as just like a uh, society that has been prevalent in generation for generations to come just an just a hyper society where the world moves way more quickly so uh, i don't know pre prevent it prevent it by your own means so whatever you think is necessary for you to share out there do share it and to and remember to share it to which group of people because uh, because the people who do not have faces and are uh, anonymous on the internet they don't care about you they don't they really don't care about you they don't care about anything you do they're there for the laughs and the fun and for all the bullying so you putting your face and your personal problems may not be the best option on the internet but it's up to you depends on how dumb you are all right all right well would any thank you for answering but uh Truthfully speaking, I okay, you know, it's fine. Uh, would anyone else like to answer the question? Maybe share their own thoughts and opinions on the question. Uh, because if not, I I do have another question to ask uh, about AI. All right, it seems that no. Okay, Mr. Rage, would you please answer? Okay, so I think the problem in your question has been addressed by many of the top, uh, like the ones who are involved with AI, especially Elon Musk. And I heard that uh, in one of the interviews, he said that AI could get pretty out of hand pretty quickly and that they had to stop the development of AI or slow it down at some point because of how scary the future is looking uh, for AI. And he said that it's crucial to have such a tremendous power in our hands under our control. We must know what we're dealing with. This is something that's beyond our reach at this moment because we have such limited knowledge on the potential of what AI could do. And if anything goes out of hand, AI can just take over and yeah, AI domination could possibly happen. But as of now, that's very unlikely because we have pretty much complete control over the AI. Uh, but I'm not sure exactly how, but they're probably involved with a lot of regulation. Uh, and a lot of monitoring and how and they probably examine the ai pretty closely so that it's always within the uh, you know the humans expectations and that they do not go out of expectations and this is pretty important and we must take steps slowly if we take it too fast it might it's probably going to go out of control and i think taking it slow is the best way and in order for a new enemy like the ai not to arise we must know it more than better than they know us so that we can always have it under our belts and under control that's it thank you all right uh, thank you for the answer um okay so now my for my if anyone else would like to answer please raise your hands uh anything to add on to what they've said uh okay um all right so now i'll move on to my second question about ai now, this is just more of a you know fun question, but do you think that AI will ever get to a point 
where they will be able to not replicate, but truly feel emotion to that level of a human. And I'm not talking about, you know, uh, mimicking it. I'm talking about real human emotion. Uh, anyone's open to answer this question. Um, all right, Mr. Ragib, would you please like to answer the question? Well, I don't have that much knowledge on this topic, but from what I presume would be, I think the closest thing that AI could come to uh, having normal human emotion is cop like, I would say 99% close to what actual true emotion would be because AI, I don't think it can have normal human emotions because normal human emotions comes from originality and i don't think ai can be original you know in one aspect because ai is basically based off of all the data that it gets fed and it basically learns from other people's emotions and experiences so i don't think any anything that the ai produces is inherently original it's just derived from all the different experiences and emotions that it has seen so it's already i guess anyone could grasp or predict how a robot would react to a given scenario i don't think a robot can come up with an original or normal human reaction that would almost seem you know comparable to a human it could be comparable like really close but i don't think it can reach to that like 100 percent towards it that's what I think. All right. Well, okay. Now, okay. I'll leave that question, uh, that for later. Okay. Mr. Abdullah Tafim, would you like to answer the question? Yeah. Uh, so I think that uh, it is proven and it's true that uh, the, the AI, they do not have the biological and the psychological mechanisms that are required for feeling emotions. So it is not possible for them. But what they can do is mimic something that has already been fed to them. So anything uh, the AI feels for you, it is just programming done by some other human being. So, but what it can do is learn more, adapt on its own by itself. So if it can adapt, then it can mimic the human emotions. But as Mr. Raghav already said, it is based on originality you, and unpredictability. So I emotions are something we cannot control. It's unpredictable. But what I think is the creators of AI can always, they can predict what the AI can say. So since it lacks that originality, since it lacks those biological and psychological mechanisms that are necessary for having those emotions by itself, so it cannot have something that no one has fed them into but if you do uh, uh make them mimic the emotions that's not original that's just faking something so if fake emotions sure but then originality no nah, no nah, that's what makes us different from the ai that's that's what made us create them not them create us so that's what make made us on the top of the hierarchy or food chain or whatever food chain is weird hierarchy yes all right, that's was a very nice answer. Now, would Mr. Uh, would Engineer Khaja like to? I see you're dead raising your hand. Uh, well, I mean that that's a question to all of them uh, participating today. Um, talking on this uh, particular special issue, uh, first of all, is uh, Abdullah Ta Tafim, if you can say briefly who is the creator of uh, AI. Um, and under uh, which authority he has done that? Uh, is there any um, uh, certification or a kind of accreditation uh, of such a, such a tool uh, for use uh, according to your information, your knowledge? All right. Uh, Ms. Uh, I think I think the AI is typically business. So whatever companies the the robot has its trademark on it, that's what the robot answers to. That's what uh, they are trying to replicate. For example, ChatGPT, they they do not have emotions, but they talk like they care about you. So that's owned by OpenAI. And then there's a Snapchat assistant that's open, that's owned by Facebook and a marketing team, and then the development team of Facebook. So whatever uh, the trademark has, whatever the mark or the company name that AI has, those are the creators, and these are the companies that compete with themselves 
who can make the better and most human like ai so that's what it answers to that's their god okay that all right i mean that that's that's a diplomatic answer but i wanted a still followed answer uh, i think tommy is there to answer this uh, yes i would like to say that um, artificial intelligence um, doesn't have a single creator or authority it has a, a lot of companies and a lot of people who has worked uh, together to create some uh, create a thing like this um, there isn't authority but there are governing bodies like open ai who owns uh, chat gpt or google who google or Apple who owns uh, softwares like Google Assistant or Siri, Amazon who owns Alexa, um, and uh, these are the governing authorities and certifications. These usually come from educational institutions or from the companies themselves who award their employees. So the, these can be the methods of uh, certifications. Great, wonderful, uh, lovely answer. Uh, I think uh, one more question to uh, Tassin, uh, Abdullah Tassin. Do you know uh, any particular coded language uh, which if you if or anybody uses, then he, he disqualifies um, for asking or participating any question to the uh, 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 chat GPT? Is there any um, uh, particular coded language which you should not use in order to disqualify? Um, I do not have uh, that much of an experience because I use chat GPT very less. So me personally, I haven't uh, come across any any uh, unusual or weird experience uh, to the point that a person gets disqualified. I'm guessing maybe maybe something if you say something inappropriate, maybe that would be the reason for getting banned on chat GPT. But it's out of my knowledge. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Grant. Yeah, um, all right. So if nobody has any more questions, uh, I'd like to basically end the session for today. Uh, it was a very uh, fruitful session. Now I will hand over the, uh, you know, the microphone to uh, the, our, uh, the, the leader of the, the host of the meeting, uh, Mr. Reza Bai, uh, engineer Reza. Okay, uh, please, uh, would you uh, take it from here? Okay, thank you very much. An excellent performance by uh, Raihan Ahmed and his team. And I believe everybody enjoyed. Now I will invite uh, our honorable advisor and today's panel of judges, uh, engineer Khaja Ahmed Bai, to, uh, to speak. Uh, something about the AI and uh, give the uh, uh, sh share the name of the two best speakers. Uh, well, uh, thank you uh, for the, the last few words. Last few words, actually, um, the, the, the organization is uh, quite good, um, but the um, uh, sequence or uh, the orientation needs uh, more uh, hand into it to make it uh, um more disciplined uh i think uh yeah session is uh, uh quite entertaining and a lot of information flowing um uh, what information is those who didn't open up your cameras video cameras uh i think uh, you might have reasons not to uh, open it that's good enough but i think you should uh, tell us the reasons also because uh, only only uh uh just excusing probably is not good enough we need to also know why you are not able to open up your cameras so in 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 general uh, any um, discussion session uh because it is on record and and this is going in public so people might uh, have that common interest to know you who you are speaking you are not just behind the screen you are opening up and then you show yourself while you speak it's there's there nothing to do with privacy here it is just a, a gentleman uh, agreement sort of thing that you are speaking in public so this is public speaking and you must keep your camera open 
and uh, for for any particular uh, reasons of course it is ex ex excused um, but uh, you should uh, give reasons for that uh, like uh, mr tamid uh, uh, for tamid we had the excuses before so that that's okay uh, it needs to be more clarity in in in, in uh, uh, sharing the uh, information um, about uh, ai and uh, there are a lot of um, a lot of uh, dark areas uh, about ai like uh, okay we 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 use uh, some of the jargons there and uh, we are getting some of the um, results from from these machines okay how they are used and i see uh, some of the government level also people are scared uh, about this ai and then they are going to drafting the policy and um, while well, i mean we all know about the cyber security uh, and the the uh, law in bangladesh about that uh, very controversial i think uh, once you know you are not uh, in command uh, of what you are talking about then the problem comes so you need actually um, uh, genuine people uh, knowledgeable people around you in order to assist you in drafting your policy so i think government should also have that kind of people around them to guide them and to come up with a policy which is um, people friendly and and it is you know, done in a very democratic way people's uh, participatory way so then it has more acceptability you know than rejection so i think uh, uh, the, the topic is is very uh, timely and it has a lot of the in-depth uh, areas to explore and also to confirm at all ages. Now, uh, a list of problems we, we can talk about, it's plenty, uh, but helping, taking the help of these uh, artificial uh, help, uh, machinery help, then we need to know also what are the ways to deal with these machines and the control of these machines. Now, if we do not have that information with us, then uh, probably we are at risk of uh, using this. Um, that, that, is, that is all, all, all my point. Uh, we must have someone uh, very knowledgeable, um, technically sound about the AI system developing and uh, how to ensure safety regarding the inflow of information, whether you, know, you are at risk of uh, losing out to, to others or not. So uh, that is my only great, uh, grave concern about it. I think slowly, slowly, um, we will see the light one day. And uh, But uh, these young buddies, uh, thanks for your brilliant participation. And it's a, it, it, that's really uh, lively. And, and, and even uh, Rehan wonderfully moderated to one who was not prepared, but uh, you encouraged him to come and talk. I think that's called leadership. This is another example of leadership that you've shown today and bringing him and, and asking him to participate and talk. And, and then it inspired him to talk. So I think this kind of inspiration will, will continue. So uh, I, I think I leave it to uh, Reza Bhai to, to declare the uh, winners. I think it goes, goes to you. Uh, and thanks for uh, giving me the uh, option to talk. OK, thank you very much uh, for uh, giving uh, delivering your valuable speech, uh, Engineer Khajamad Bhai. Now I'll invite another judges today, uh, Engineer Pankaj Vishash, to deliver your speech to the students thank you thank you very much to all participants today and all young participants did uh, nicely delivered all this uh, about the ai all the technical points and uh, what is uh, in today's world ai actually today's world it is the buzzword of the ai ai and machine learning these two things are the buzzwords for the today's world. And recently I read one article, it is written that within another 10 years, AI will earn around $35 trillion. $35 trillion to earn with, within 10 years means how many people in the world will be engaged in this AI industry. So you can say that our, uh, I mean, AI industry, uh, very near future, we, we will be we will not be depend on the AI, AI only. And, uh, thing is, some people are thinking like the bad side of the AI. There is a dark side, yes, there is, but 
there is some positive side of the AI as well. If we think the positive side, what uh, I noticed that uh, Mr. Fahamid Ahmed, he told and uh, he mentioned some of the positive sides of the AI. If also Mr. Uh, what's his name, Abdullah Tahsin, he also mentioned some positive side of the AI. If it goes to the wrong hand, then AI can diminish ourselves. But if it is goes to the right hand, then AI will be really the development of the world. We will never depend on the AI. Our intelligence from the time immemorial, our intelligence, in fact, uh, what we dream, what we dream in the world that developed and that come into the AI. Uh, for, to all the students and uh, the participants, now what you are dreaming now, it is maybe it did not come in the world in future, but you will see when you will be uh, after 20 years, this what you dream today, it will become in the real, I mean, reality. For example, when we were in the class eight or nine, we were thinking about this, if we had a watch and if we can talk with, with this watch. And now it is in the reality. Right? So similarly, this AI will give us progress in the future life. Uh, thank you very much to all participants. Uh, and uh, we hope that we will go in future some more good, uh, uh, for, uh, I mean, this kind of projects and performance. Thank, thank you, very you very much for your encouraging uh, speech, Engineer uh, Pankaj Vishwas. So I will declare uh, two best speakers up, after a speech and the delivering speech of uh, engineer Raghubul Talukdar. Engineer Raghubul, bhai, are you here? Yeah, assalamualaikum. Yes, I'm here. Uh, I listen carefully the speakers, uh, how they speak. Actually, it's a uh, Thanks to organizer to select the suitable subject is the timely selected the subject. Now we can see, we can tell that AI is the initial stage now, but in future, it will be, it will be essential for us, for everyone. If we can give example, say computer, how it was 30 years back, we thought that it's a, it's a luxurious or some particular application is required. Nowadays, how without computer or laptop or this uh, iPad, we cannot do anything. Student cannot study the co without computer or iPad. So after 30 years, how is the world changed and how is necessary for this technology? Similar way, this AI technology also will be like this after 30 years. So it's the initial stage and that is why the subject was selected properly and the students should know what is AI. And so, so they will be interested to know and they will be, you know, study on that because this is will be essential for each, each and every field. If you think about the engineering or medical aviation, everywhere it is very good. So thanks the all the students who participated and, and prepared themselves properly to speak and thanks the organizer to select the uh, proper subject timely manner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Rokibul uh, Talukdar, for uh, giving your valuable time attending the session and encourage the students. Now, oh, I'll declare two best speakers, and after that, our uh, today's honorable guest, Engineer Mohammad Hassan Ali, will deliver this speech at the last. So, today, according to the panel of judges, today's best two best speakers is. Abdullah Tasin and Tahmid Ahmed. Abdullah Tasin for the first year and Tahmid Ahmed, grade nine. Congratulations to both for excellent performance. Now I will invite our today's uh, honorable guest, engineer Mohammed Hassan Ali, assistant manager, Deva, and honorable advisor, Bangladesh Engineers and Architect Worldwide. Uh, you are requested to deliver your speech. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks, Rajabai and the organizer 
today's uh, the subject is a very important subject and uh, the current subject which is developing and uh, as a uh, arkabul islam talukdar bhai told that this is the initial stage so many things is developing so our student they are in the line with the new technologies and uh, thanks for all the participants who give the good ideas so so i think uh you should adjust with the technologies so you will be stay in the race in future so thanks again to everybody organizing such a good interesting uh, this topic so thank you all okay thank you very much uh, uh, engineer hasan ali bhai uh, for giving your valuable speech and and encourage uh, the students and today uh, session is very very important and whole uh, next what is the uh, engineer pongoj vishas told that next 25 to 30 years we will see the huge development and domination from ai and there is a lot of threats is coming up lot of opportunities are coming up so we'll see so we have another session for the same topic it will be on sunday and uh, it will be junior group we are 7 and below everybody is invited to join this session and enjoy the session and encourage our students leadership to grow up thank you very much good evening assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum thank you very much thank you very much to all all participants and judges and uh, honorary guests thank you very much to organize such a good program to engineer reja and engineer amjad thank you very much to all Welcome.